Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last season of Europe, in which we're playing as a West Russian revolutionary front. Last time, we did really, really well. We took out Komi, we took out Vyadka, Vologda submitted to us, and we also took out the soldiers of the Order of St. George, but it's time for another focus. This Operation Second Sun? Sounds like fun. Operation Mixed Breed sounds kind of crazy. End of the Republic? Uh, let's see, what do we want? Well, let's go 10 minute trials. Well, the West Russian War was not kind of the front. While it rode high on the spirit of the eventual liberation of Muscovine and gave the Germans a bloody nose, a combination of revisionists and bloody reactionaries defeated it, forcing it to regroup. The initial choice for the retreat seemed obvious. The city of Siktivkar, the temporary capital of West Russia. However, a power play by one of the traitors, Suslov, tore the front apart, leaving it without its seat of government. The so called Republic of Komi is now in shambles, its territory now rightfully rejoining with the front. Dukachevsky judges that it is high time for the conspirators to pay the price of justice. He will round them up. But he won't kill them. At least not without a due process of law. He gives them trials where the lies and deeds shall condemn their memory without redemption forever. Very good. And it looks like we do want to go head on into the Aryan Brotherhood. That seems pretty nice. And Tomsk, or Omsk, I should say. Well, both are at war with somebody, so. Kemerovo is looking pretty good against Tomsk. After that one, we shall do or repurpose the churches. During the reign of deception, the priests of Gaini stole which belonged to the peoples and used it to build places of worship for themselves. Despite the best efforts of some of the more zealous elements of our military, many of those buildings still exist and could easily be converted to more productive uses. Out with the icons and crosses, in with the banners and stars. Isolated monasteries will be turned into ammunition dumps, while churches will be used as barracks for soldiers. Any religious trinket that can't be broken down and reused will be destroyed once their men are accommodated. The remainder of the buildings will be used as warehouses for less essential goods. When this repurposing is finally done, we will at least be able to say that the effort towards put, put towards constructing these edifices was entirely wasted. Alright, quick justice. When the time came for the leadership of Comey to be tried, the courthouse was packed. Crowds roared as men and women of importance, or presumed importance, were shuffled in and out from politicians to generals and radio hosts. Mikhail Suslov had noticed, however, not a single figure who would happen to be carted to the podium before him to gain an innocent verdict. The first thing they had to go between the rightists, or had to been, had been the rightists. He said nothing, even as Gumilev bid, bid an affable goodbye to everyone, nor did he flinch as the crowds drowned out Shafarovich's attempts at a defense. He didn't even let loose a chuckle as Taborsky was dragged out in record time, his defense beginning and ending in a single phrase. Had the Germans killed every last one of you? <laughs> oh, Tab, we never change. Several would swear that as Ivan Serov was dragged out with eyes full of fear, a single small smirk appeared on Soslov's face. <clears throat> the truth was he was largely preoccupied with his morality. Mortality. An attempt to run would lead to you being shot. An attempt to plead your case would end with you being shot. Tukhachevsky already decided who was innocent. Bukharina and Andropov were not pressed into the crowd of leftists, paramilitaries, members, and others who had been sorted. A single young pang of fear hit him, even as a stoic mask bellied nothing. He was going to die here, no matter what he said or had done. Begging like Vosnesensky, being defined like Stalin and Kosygin, not a single way past the Grand Marshal's verdict. As the center was swept aside, the left's trials began, the pangs grew. The next hour dragged on as the show continued. The jurors stated a single word, then passion prosecutors read their scripts with a driven zeal, and the crowd roared. Then came his turn, and the pangs subsi subsided. If he was going to die, then why give the Grand Marshal an inkling of satisfaction? Mikhail Suslov raised his head high and spoke one last sentence. I have nothing to say. 1964, Tokyo Olympic Games. Very good. Vologdan wealth seized. I love it. Oh, look, a little bit more manpower. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. When's the next research done? It's going to be quite a while. Repurpose the churches. And then we shall end the Republic. Tukhachevsky has doled out justice in Komi. The former leaders of the Republic are now caged, executed, or else gone. The weapons, once a significant threat to the front's war efforts, have been brought under our control. The Republic of Komi now exists more in memory than in fact, with its territories retaken by the front and its proletariat restored to the position. It's now time to reestablish ourselves or our, our authority in Komi. Their legislative body will convene for the one last time for a single purpose to vote for and ratify the official dissolution of the Republic. Dukhachevsky shall preside over the establishment of a new military district to ensure that no traitors will threaten the front again. It remind the people of Komi of the dangers of liberalism, and that socialism will stamp on it like a boot onto a face forever. A little bit of lag, alright, whatever. Oh, wow, that was fast! Holy cow. Grand Principality of Central Siberia. Oh, is this Rurik, is it? Yeah, it is Rurik. Oh boy. That's not going to be easy against him. Military access, don't care about Litaus. Anyone have treasure? Yugra does. Hmm. Hmm. 
Finding in... Oh, this might not be mountains. Hmm. We will see. Chewy cough. Panzers? Why are we using him then for all this stuff? Eh, it doesn't really matter. It's level 4 attack, so... Alright then. Oh, we still have a successful raid as well, so... Go figure. And end the Republic? Root out the plot. It seems that the lies of the Orthodox Church have been ingrained in the minds of Ganey's proletariat far more strongly than we had anticipated. Even after we explain how religion is merely an opium of the masses meant to distract us or distract them from the oppression present in every aspect of their life, they still cling to the priests as if they actually meant them well. The solution, then, is to strike the infection at its source. We will round up the priests of Ganey to pass our judgment. The lesser among them will merely be imprisoned while where they can reflect on how they deceive their fellow countrymen, while those beyond redemption will be dealt with appropriately. Misleading the people is treason, and treason is a capital offense. The Redeemable. The Grand Marshal listened to Beethoven's Third, one of his favorite symphonies, as he absentmindedly flitted, uh, flitted through the letter from Svetlana Bukharina. There was a similar one from Yuri Andronopov on his desk, but he wouldn't even bother glancing over that one. Andropov would follow where Bukharina went, and Bukharina declared her undying faith in Tukhachevsky and the restored Soviet Union, then he was false suit. He didn't much care what platitudes and promises of loyalty Bukharina had to offer either, but truth be told, he could have had both of them ex executed for merely being members of the Suslov's little clique in Komi, and they both knew it. Anything they said was simply an attempt to save their own skins, to avoid being shot and dumped in a ditch like Suslov, Gumilev, Tvorotsky, Vaznesensky, Stalina, Kosygin, and all other traitors and reactionaries. He already, made up, he already made up his mind, though. Had the daughter of the Volkaran in his camp would help bring the last remaining vestiges of the old Soviet regime onto his side and win him the loyalty of the people of, the Komi, of Komi, who adored Bukharina. Whatever problems she might cause in the future were a small price to pay for that. As he tossed her letter to the side, he thought it to the future. Finally, the great wound that tore apart the Soviet Union could heal, and united in spirit and purpose. The Soviet Union could once again turn to face the true enemies, and he would be there, leading them to the victory. First to Moscow, then Germania, then beyond. Thank you, Comrade Svetlana. Svetlana, Svetlana, Svetlana. Now, we can focus on infrastructure. I kind of want to focus on infrastructure, but we do need to keep political power just to core things. So, I'm going to keep the the political power for now. And we did core stuff. So, that's actually really good. Are we actually making things finally? That's going to take so long, though. Oh, I see why. Ooh, that looks so bad. Oh, Samara and the Brotherhood are killing each other. I hope the Brotherhood wins, actually. Because the Brotherhood's probably actually a little weaker. So, I'm rooting for them. Oh, they have no manpower. Oh, neither side has manpower. Actually, Samara's weaker. Oh, huh, I thought... The other side was weaker. Well, whatever. Alright, go and do the raid. Thank you. Thank you. We got the platinum. Burn the opiate. Although the church's military has been defeated, a demonstration is ordered for the purpose of firmly establishing that we are in charge now. Two of the divisions of our finest soldiers will be sent into Gaini itself to solidify control of the surrounding regions. Once there, they will root out and deal with those priests and the collaborators that remain in the settlement and set up the beginnings of, their, of our own administration. Detachments will also be sent into the countryside to find and deliver swift justice to the clergy who have fled before our troops arrived. Simultaneously, with this neutering of orthodox corruption, we can begin the process of formally integrating Gaini into our territory. Its population, no longer duped, uh, will soon come to see the inherent righteousness of the Grand Marshal and his crusade to liberate Russia. Great. Schools, workers, eh, research facilities. I prefer schools over research facilities and workers. Great. The church schemes. In the waning days of the Russian Empire, it seemed now inc inconceivable that so religious a people could endorse so heartily an ideology that defined his hatred of religion. The contradiction between the state atheism of the Soviet Union and its varied warlord successor states have been resolved in various ways and in various places, sometimes by tolerance, sometimes by collaboration, sometimes by heavy-handed oppression. Until recently, the West Russian Revolutionary Front had taken the path of least resistance and neglect. So long as the Orthodox churches did not openly challenge the Communist Party, they were free to do as they pleased, although they certainly didn't, couldn't expect the privileges that and the state subsidies of old. Now, with the rise of Grand Marshal Mikhail Tukhachevsky, it seems that the church can no longer expect such benign treatment. These superstitious fools with their talks of heavenly reward and children of God are nothing more than charlatans who seek to weaken the hearts of true socialists for their own de degenerate passions and pleasures. It is only time that the idols be torn down, the tables of gold, golden lies be turned over, and the false temples be converted into barracks for the people's army. Those that resist a righteous cleansing will be quickly executed. The others will spend the rest of their lives in the gulag performing the earthly labor that they attempted to escape by claiming heavenly enlightenment. Religion is the opiate of the masses. Oh, wow, we lose quite a bit more stability, which I don't like. Now, a couple comments I forgot to do. Uh, some people recommend I do Zukov's campaign immediately after this. We'll get there eventually. There's no promises, but we'll get there eventually. Um, I promise we'll, I will play them eventually, so. And apparently I was calling for more motorized or artillery or something. I'm not exactly sure. We have, we've got a good amount of motorized already. We need more motorized, I guess, maybe in our divisions. We definitely still need a little, a little bit more artillery. I did make sure that these guys have motorized artillery as well, so. Just to be sure that... They do okay. And since you guys are 40 comp 20 combo with, we might as well make them 40 combo with, since we have more than enough. Army XP for it, so. 
And I will convert most of our divisions to 40 combos eventually, so. Uh, put you there, and then put you there, and then put you in the center, because he looks really cool. There you go. A little bit less piercing, whatever. So these guys are speedy boys. Speedy, speedy, strong boys. Very nice. We could train, too, if we really wanted to. Okay, scavenge for loot. Don't mind if we do. After burning the opiates. Opiate. Alright, so we can't... Oh. Peace conference. Goodbye, Slovak state. And another event. Burning the opiate. Burning the opium. <clears throat> Old man and Vitaly have been around for a long, long time. He fought in the West Russian War before the Great Patriotic War, and even before that, the Great Civil War for the heart and soul of Russia. He bore scars from a hundred battles and a small collection of medals proudly adorned his jacket, including that of a hero of the Soviet Union. His golden star now rusted and chipped. Some say he was the oldest man in the Red Army, the youngest br and the young, bright man faced face man, face men who fought under the band of the Grand Marshal, jokingly considered the old officer a good luck charm, although Vitaly protested the childish superstition. He remembered life before the revolution with its R and the church relied or ruled by terror in Russia. He remembered the programs of 1905 when the priests led the backward masses to kill thousands in the streets under the cry, kill the Jews. He remembered the servile superstition of the serfs, who were told by the priests to worship the Tsar as a living god, even while their sons were sent to the deaths on the fields of Tannenberg. He remembered the years after, after October, when the priests had rallied behind the whites and their foreign allies to surround and starve Russia. And after so many years, they had fought once more and attempted to bring this country under the sway of the foul religion. The Order of St. George, like all the old institutions of the Church, would have to once more be expunged. The Grand Marshal had been correct to choose him for the task. The young officers did not remember. They would be too soft on the priests. He carried out the new Red Terror with a zilchi of one who remembered the old Russia. Who knew that there was no going back down with God? Oh, so we have all this done. If you'd like to read about this one, go right ahead. As well as eradicate monarchist influence. As well as absorb the compatible elements. As well as collapse the syncretic concept. And with Operation Second Sun. Liquidate the court. Let's do this one. Our seizure of Vyadka has brought into our possession a great deal of new resources. Armors filled with munitions, of course, but just many valuables, such as jewelry and other symbols of the vanity of the upper classes. We'll put these to good use funding our military. Gold and silver will be melted down, gemstones will be stored and cataloged. Everything was once the property of nobility who now belong to the Red Army. What precisely we will do with these newfound resources, however, is still a matter of debate. Should they be used to purchase more arms or pay the soldiers who obtain them? Several commanders have even suggested keeping our spoils in a secure vault for emergency use in the event of a future crisis. Whatever the final decision, there's no doubt that liberating Vyadka has proven to be a grand boom for the Grand Marshal. Support equipment, anti-tank, yes. And more guns, which is nice. I'm glad we're building new schools. Oh, you know what? Let's go and get some more infrastructure for now. It hurts our construction speed for now a little bit, but whatever. Oh, it's already 1965. Happy 1965, everyone. So the Far East is still struggling. Central Siberia is still struggling. These guys, well, they seem to always be struggling. So what do we have that it's increasing? Basic literacy is going up by a lot. Research is going up slowly. Agriculture is going up by a lot. Eight a month. Can you promise we can... Can Johnson deliver? Maybe. Poverty is barely going up. Industrial equipment is going up by 10, which is awesome. Even industrial expertise is slowly going up as well. And armed professionalism is going up by 6 a month. Very nice. Liquidate the corp. The head of the disgusting beast of monarchism has been cut off now, it's, but now it's time to deal with its many limbs. Yaka's nobility still cling to the pathetic delusions of superiority, even in the face of the mighty Red Army. And no doubt they are even now thinking of ways to undermine us. The more troublesome of them will be dealt with by the bullet, while the rest will be locked up until such a time comes that can prove that they have been rehabilitated. Their families too will join them, for unfortunately not every children, not even children, are immune to the reactionary taint. With this, we will finally be able to deliver the justice that so many of these former emigres managed to avoid half a century ago. No longer will Russia's people tolerate the depravity of aristocracy. The revolution is here to stay. And stay it shall. Oh, do we have another division? Nice! At this point, I'm going to go ahead and have her. Oh, Dolvanga. Going crazy. End of the South African War. Secure the population. For whatever reason, the proletariat of Vyaka has proven to be less cooperative than might be expected. So we can see we have to have a certain nostalgia for the man with a gall to lay claim to the title as ridiculous as Emperor of all Russia. It would therefore appear that a re-education campaign may be necessary. My apologies for my pronunciations, first of all. Uh, appear that a re-education camp may be necessary to undo this brainwashing. Towns will be placed under the control of units of military police who will keep a watchful eye out for any self-destructive acts of disobedience. Commissars will be deployed to seek out and dispose of any of those who continue to spread reactionary propaganda. In the end, the inevitable can only be delayed for so long, and soon the revolution will be swept over Vyatka as quickly as the Red Army did. Then the people will flock to the Grand Marshal to be welcomed into the ranks of his armies with open arms. And we get out with the old. My apologies for that. And if you're hearing something in the background, that's not me, that is someone else, and I'll be right back. Oh, and now George Jellicoe elected English Prime Minister. Who the heck is that? Oh. Baratia unifies the Far Eastern Republic. Wow. 
So, end of the Romanovs. Vladimir desperately attempted to hold back his tears as he and his wife wrapped their arms around their daughter's shaking body, sobbing as she had never before between her parents' arms. The basement they were held in was cold, barren, and wet, some hut in the middle of nowhere, a few miles away from where the Bolsheviks had captured them as they attempted to flee across the Urals. He could hear them talking lowly upstairs, conversing with their commander, commander on the radio. Words he couldn't make out, but the venom in their voice was clear. He was doomed, he knew that, but what? That wouldn't stop him from praying to God to every saint he could think of. If he was going to die, at least spare his family. Maria's weeping grew ever louder at the sound of boots stomping down wooden stairs. The tears flowed freely from his eyes as he brushed Maria's hair. It'll be okay, my sweet, he murmured to his daughter, trying to desperately but futilely to keep his voice from quaking. Father will protect you from the bad men, I promise. He looked up to his wife, eyes red, opened his mouth to say something, a declaration of love, a farewell, he wasn't sure, but the door burst open and whatever he was going to say was lost. Six men entered, weapons in their hands, and Maria screamed. Vlad pushed his family behind him. Please, shoot me if you must, but please spare the... When the first bullet hit his chest, he wondered for a brief moment if he was going to hurt more. Then the second, then the third, and the suddenly all he knew was pain. He stumbled backwards, and for a brief moment, the only sounds in the world were those of his wife screaming, his daughter crying, and the sounds of guns firing. His head hit the floor, stone floor hard, and his vision grew blurry with tears. He couldn't see, but he could hear. He could hear the crying and the screaming until suddenly the world was filled with nothing but bullets. And so ended the crying and screaming. Blood's world was nothing now but the sounds of his daughter and his wife's bodies hitting the floor. It was the last thing he would ever know. Memento mori. Oh boy, that is... Ooh. But we must secure the population, for whatever reason. Uh, actually, I think you just read this, right? Yeah. Yeah, commissars will be deployed to seek out and dispose of those who continued to spread reactionary propaganda. You know, it is what it is. And we're also justifying a raid on Yugra again. Yugra, very rich. And they refuse tribute. What? Yugra. And now, attacking the mount isn't a great idea. But how strong are they? They have only three divisions. They've got a lot less manpower. <laughs> a lot less. So, great. Okay, great. More equipment. Love it. And we're going to secure control again because we need more stability because it's always going to get lower as we're integrating other places. And it looks like, ooh, if you'd like to read about treasure, go right ahead. And since we have that, I'm going to go do industrial investments anyways. It's not bad. Secure the population and operation trial phase. One would think that after decades of Nazi oppression, our opinion of the Germans would universally be hated. Evidently, we overestimated the Russian people's common sense. Out of the city of Perm rules a mad cult that worships every aspect of the Reich, from its ideology to its iconography. If nothing else... Crushing them will be good practice for the real thing. We we'll send a man to the Aryan Brotherhood for their immediate surrender. Oh, the old posters look striking up upon the walls of Yatka, their strong colors standing out to the gray drabness of its streets. With the arrival of the Red Army is vanquishing of the Tsar, the city has been renamed Rikov. After Alexei Rikov, the old Bolshevik revolutionary. Yet the people still persisted to calling it Vyatka, a pathetic show of reactionary nostalgia for the old regime. The newly re-established Department of Agitation and Propaganda is here to fix that. Everywhere you look, you can see them. The most popular death picks, Tsar Vladimir III, crawling on the floor like a dog, a leash tied around his neck like held by Adolf Hitler. A, one, a man once lauded to the people of Rekov as a savior of Russia, and turning into a source of public ridicule. Some of the posters take a more somber approach. One depicts Boris Smeslovsky, the spymaster of Okhrana, uh, yeah, the Yadka's secret police, as a sinister monster resting over a pile of corpses. The hordes of the Okhrana are well known by the people of Rekov. Another shows a soldier of the Red Army, sword in hand, fighting off the three-headed Hydra, one representing Tsardom, another Nazism, and a third of the Orthodox Church. The people of Rykov must know that the, the old order is gone and that the fight for a free Russia has only just begun. End with the new. Ah, stability. I've got a lot more war support. And let's see. Belsk. Siktivkar. Oh, there it is. Rykov. They actually did change in the game. Sometimes when they say they do things, uh, they don't actually do them, so. I'm actually glad they did that. Cool. They refuse their demands. If you'd like to read about that, go right ahead. Uh, actually, they're probably going to capitulate the easy way, the hard way. What if they capitulate now to us instead of Samara? That'd be kind of nice. And they refuse? Okay, so be it. Come on, soldiers, move. The shield broken. Very good. And, okay. Well, everything else was already completed. Okay, whoa! Look at all this stuff. Operation Trial Phase, burn the nonsense, execute Aryan leaders, never again. Operation Clockwork, integrate the tank, tank fleet, reactivate his factories, deal with the officers, steep rider, a red Tartastan, integrate the Tatas, the Tartar military district, Operation Sacred Sword, learn from the strategy. A secular front, and then the Bashkir military, and now we shall do 
Operation Iconoclast. Western Russia is filled with the despicable traitors and opportunists. Few have even been more despicable and more opportunistic than Andrei Vlasov, Nazi lapdog and leader of the so-called Russian Liberation Army, which has taken residence in the key city of Khoibyshev. Vlasov was one of the key elements in the near destruction of the front during the West Russian War and subjugate, subjected the people of that city to fascist rule ever since. The destruction of the ROA will be the long sought after the victory of the for the front, and chance to retaliate for the dashing of her hopes in the 50s. They better surrender or face destruction. Total and complete annihilation. Artillery is looking worse now just because we put more guys, more infantry, or more artillery on our motorized divisions. Makes sense. But actually looking better on anti tank too, which is kind of nice. So they're trying to make this stuff. So be it, so be it, so be it. They refuse their terms. Oh, good. And reporting new industrial equipment. Oh, we can scatch for loot by this point, it doesn't matter. Since this is the last group we probably have to take out to reunite the front. And I'll do it anyways, why not? Just in case. You never know. And if you just find a warning. Um, you guys, you gotta go in whether you like it or not. So be it. Hey, you know what? They're getting a lot more resistance here, so that's... Oh, wow, that's a lot of resistance. That is quite a bit. Operation... Cool. My kind of class is done. Actually, you guys just go there. I don't know why you go in that direction. We should do relatively okay. I'm not really too worried about it. The Battle of Barcelona. Down with tyranny. Um, you guys go right there. Go to Gorky. And Kostovo. Kostovo. Nice. It shouldn't be that bad of a war for us, really. About 2,000. They actually lost only 1,000. Nice. More industries. Good, good, good. Wow, that helicopter's going to take forever to research. Whatever. It's already 65. Let's grab some civilian construction stuff. That'd be good. Oh, capture the factory. We have acquired the Gorky Tank Factory, the largest producer of armored vehicles in Western Russia. This factory was a vital part of the Soviet industrial production and saw heavy usage during the Western Ru West Russian War. In the aftermath of the WRRF's collapse, it fell into the hands of Nikolai Avarin and his divisions of bandits, who used the factory to pump out tanks for their raids on Rex Commissar Muscovy, a noble fate for such an important piece of military infrastructure. Tanks were rare among the warlords of Russia, making anyone who could produce them a force to be reckoned with, and making the factory a highly sought after, after the prize. So highly sought after prize. Now that it belongs to us, we can utilize Gorky's tank factory for a higher purpose than stealing scraps from the Germans. Regaining the capacity to produce tanks will be another step towards re-achieving military capabilities of a full-fledged nation. And another step declaring a final victory in West Russia. The power of modern warfare unleashed. Very good. Actually, just guys, go down here and cut these guys off. Seriously. That would be the smart thing to do. Cut all the soldiers off. Cut them all off. Good, we have done it. That's good. You guys go this way. Go down there. That's good. Go for the capital if you can. Better industrial equipment. The economy is doing great. New reforms in industrial subsidizing have resulted in the shipping and update on industrial equipment across the country. Products are being shipped are quick, uh, quicker and cheaper. The further progress and mechanization into the once ossified industrial world will prove a boon to worker and manager alike. No more long, horrible hours in soap bar products screwed in by imperfect human hands. Industry continues to march forward. These were a long time coming, however. Increases in budgets and a renewed focus on what other industries are making have increased support for, such me for a much needed renovation of our country's industrial equipment. Very good. Kill them off. Good. Exactly what we need. Help out. Oh, are they leaving through there? Huh. Siberian Black League is gone, huh? Well, goodbye then. Goodbye. Black Ar Arms trading increases, whatever. Uh, we, only we don't have that much more loot. Well, that's alright. And now they have. Up to six divisions left. We lost 5,000. They lost 17,000. Obviously not enough, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Democracy returns to Italy. We'll get a good job with you, that, guys. You're so... Why did you... What the heck? No, no, no. You gotta go that way, man. You gotta go that way. Samara's ours. Great. Still a lot of enemies around here, and you guys refuse to do anything about it, which I don't agree with. They have motorized. Well, then kill them off. Um... Yeah, not much else here. Okay, beat him up. Hey, we won! Yay! There we go, everyone. Yep, and I'm glad I saved all the political power, everyone. Very nice. Now, we're going to do all this stuff, and then we'll go ahead and... 
do the unification stuff. So, crack open the arsenals. It's well known that the Russian Liberation Army received an enormous amount of material support during the Reich, especially during the West Russian War. Whilst this is an example of their cowardice and treachery, it's some positives for us. For the first time, the Red Army has obtained an enormous cache of German weaponry. It's always valuable to know one's enemy. Training our men in the use of equipment from the Reich will give us insight into their operations. Which is a very, very good thing. Next up, eradicate German influence. During the period of fascist rule in the K word city, Vlasov and his army of traitors managed to indoctrinate his people in their sick ideology. The traitors of the ROA were hailed as liberators, and the Red Army as devils. A number of local people betrayed their own countrymen and willingly worked in the illegitimate government. No remain remnant of fascism could be allowed to survive. We will destroy every trace of fascist and icon iconography, and collaborators will be harshly punished. Nothing else will adequately honor those that the Germans and their allies murdered. Very good. Wow, we way more anti tank now. Even guns, too. Wow. Then again, what do you expect when we need to garrison areas? And we lost all that manpower already. Wow. Uh, I have a good feeling we have to go to War the Nugget as well. Go ahead and finish training our guys, too. We got so much to build. So much to do. And we'll build mostly a lot, a lot more factories, too, as well, so. Great. And then no more German agents. It is a supreme idiocy to fight for the cause of one's existential enemies. It does not stop the Russian Liberation Army from going underground in the aftermath of their defeat, continuing their fight for fascism as guerrilla units. One Victor Maltsev and his allied generals have been instrumental in the struggle, making up the last remnant of Vlasov's government. Units will be dedicated to purge the countryside of fascist residue immediately. It is clear that these criminals reactionaries will fight on until the bitter end, and we shall gladly oblige them. Scouring the records. The following cabinet of old was pre-war, dented in a hundred places, and just beginning to show its hints of rusts. Looking bad at it, sitting meekly in the corner of a room in Mokharin's old Samara bunker, where Vlasov and his chairs once held court, you can tell the terrorists at home. When the Grand Marshal's troops stormed the bunker, fighting the ROA room to room, they almost passed it over completely. Days after it was discovered, it was Arkhangelsk, where the officers of the Smersh poured over its contents with a fine-toothed comb. Fine tooth comb, yeah. The personnel files of the official dumb and bureaucracy of the ROA were a fine catch if only to keep an eye on the former's membership and the future. It did not take them longer to discover that many of the documents contained details of a more sinister nature. All of them were collaborators, the personals, personnel in the files. That much was assumed by the membership of the ROA. So were merely that, defectors from the Red Army who joined the blast off at German prisoner of war camps, choosing treason rather than death by starvation in the camps. Their files contained a little more than a list of battles they fought at during the war. The others were different. Former SS members responsible for acts of unspeakable brutality against Belarusian civilians in Operation Kakpus. Officers who participated in the massacres at the notorious Goli of Petrushino. Informants who handed over thousands of the gas to the gas chambers. Woman Antonia Makarova, now living out of her retirement in living out her retirement in Samara after working years as a secretary for the ROA, was responsible for the murder of some 1,500 partisans and their family members during the war. She used a machine gun to mow them down 27 at a time. Had them shot? So be it. Man, oh man. When we're trying to get this done, we're losing 0.32 political power every day. That is not good. And six more places will be cored. 41 factories. Hopefully, jumps will be a little bit higher. To 57, not bad. Very nice. Very, very nice, actually. We can actually start making things of all sorts of natures. Awesome. Planes, transports, artillery. Well, let's see. What else do we need? We're going to make some more tanks, hopefully. And APCs will come along nicely. That's good. Get some more basic anti-tank. We're going to need even more. That'll be good. That'll be very good. We're doing very, very well now. Very, very well now. Number of German agents. Bring them home. It appears that the Finns had quite the number on the people of the occupied territories. As far as we can tell, the Russians were deported in large numbers to replace with settlers from Finland. Now, we have a chance to repay them in kind. People removed by the anti-communist guard will be returned to their homes, and the bidders shipped back to their rightful ones on the other side of the border with Finland. Demographic warfare is an ugly affair, but we cannot tolerate a Finnish fifth column in our new territories. Well, it's really our old territories, but you know, whatever. Oh, we don't own... Oh, we have to be the regional stage for that. Cool. That's fine. I guess it's time then. Ooh. Ooh. Actually, you know what? Maybe we can raid these guys one last time and beat them up and make them very weak. Looks like they've got a little bit more strength first. And then we can grab another research slot too, which would be great. So let's go and raid them. Take their loot. And then do our other stuff. And then maybe we can build up more agriculture methods. Why not? Go right ahead. Come on, give in. Oh, wait, maybe we should stop training. That would probably help our chances of winning. <laughs> Three, two, one. Let's go. Now, actually, they're attacking. They're, they're, they're doing okay. But obviously, they're not going to be a hold. They're not going to be able to hold up against all of us here. How much artillery do we have now? Minus 20. Well, great. 
All right, agriculture methods, thank you. And restore the West Revolutionary Russian Front. West Russian Revolutionary Front. Great. More 30 more naval XP, huh? Beautiful. Oh, Inspector Hansi, you're up. Hey, look at that flag. A little different. Bring them home. Well, we need to own own Egan now. Oh, another research slot. Oh, we got 0 .03 billion, huh? Not bad. Not great, but not bad. Cap, output. Let's give more max factories. Horizontal industrial stuff. Request finished negotiations. Warlord recruitment is gone. No, we're just going to invade. Spoils of war. Beautiful. More stability. More support. Some more rifles. What would you not love about that? How much manpower do we have now? 60,000? 600,000. Oh, wow. That is not bad. I like that a lot. Garrisons. Yeah, we need to get military police. These guys aren't bad. But they're only 17 combat with. And actually, before we do, do go to war. Oh, we do have some planes here. Can we merge them together? Cass? Yes, yes. Nice. Oh, what can we do here? We went to war with the Finns as well. Oh, yeah, we can do all this stuff as well. That's really good. What's our budget like? Well, we have a deficit. Spend more on the military for now. Spend more on all that stuff. Spend, 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 spend. But we can't make anything. Wait, what? Is it minus 90% complete, huh? Alright, wait, whatever. Go ahead and move on in if we can. If I did this up here first, we still can't make anything. Wow. That is quite unfortunate. How many divisions do the Finns have? Up to 21, which is not bad. That's more than us, so... We'll have to be probably fairly careful with them. Great. And immediately continue moving in, please. Oh, they attack us. Very nice, very nice. Hungary goes into isolation. A surprising turn of events. Oh, Hungary, are you doing something different here? Ah, oh, they died. Good. Get over there quickly. Uh, you guys just hold Indonesian War. No one cares. You guys hold for now. I don't want to get encircled or anything, but I, we want to keep this over the river for now. That'll be good. Oh, oh yeah, this one. Reclaim what is ours. Hang the collaborators. Let's do this one. At long last, the Finns have relinquished control over Murmansk and Karelia. The task for the front is to regain the trust of the local people. Since the government governments established during Finnish rule have been eliminated, we need to establish new ones in line with our principles, as well as begin recruiting for the Red Army. Revolutionary propaganda will be important to persuade a population indoctrinated with anti-communist dogma. We have fought hard to liberate these regions. Soon, they will soon be Soviet once more. I can circle these guys. Uh, they are trying to attack us. Let's see, we've lost 2,000. They've lost 31,000. That's not bad. Yeah, doing this area is... Really good. Caffeine flow. If you'd like to read about this, this happens almost every campaign, so it is what it is. A toast to our future successes. Great. Actually, how much damage are we doing? Not enough, but we have more than enough planes to help take out the enemy, so that's ideal. Quite ideal. Oh, yeah, we could get in a circle there, too. I didn't realize that. Help out, help out. Offer ceasefire, though, or so does not manage to shatter the finish lines as we hope, or still making steady advances into their territory. Perhaps fearing that they will not be able to hold us off for much longer, or simply not wanting to spend the blood and treasure to repel us, the Finns have offered us the truth. They propose to cede Onega to us in exchange for an end to the fighting. Shall we accept the treaty as they've offered us to beat, or reject it and fight for greater gains? No. No, we, these Finns have got to learn a lesson. How about down here, too? That'd be good. Good. Get some more recovery. Oh, we could have gotten encircled there. That would have been very, very, very bad. Smash him, smash him, reclaim what's ours. And then hang the collaborators. Now that the Finns have been dealt with, it's time for us to return our attention to the Russians who aided and abetted them. This is a crime with thousands of guilty parties, as many collaborated with Helsinki, either in administering the wo wrongfully seized Russian territories or in fighting for the anti communist vanguard or volunteer guard. For this blatant treachery, they can only be dealt with in the harshest terms. The leaders of the volunteer guard shall be singled out in particular for their unforgivable actions against the front. I'd love to core a nega, but we have no political power. We literally have no political power at all. And I don't know why we can't be making anything here. This doesn't make any sense. We're spending more money, right? We're spending a billion, which is a lot of money, but still. 
Good. Help them out. Help them out. Nice. Crush their strength. Crush them. Crush them. Crush them. Crush them. Good. Okay, you guys might be a bit, a bit too extreme in terms of wanting to do this stuff. Yeah, you just, just kind of hold for now. That's better. We've lost probably quite a few men. They've lost quite a bit more than us, though. So, not bad. That's actually going better than I thought it would be. I want you guys to go there. I want you guys to go there, 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 there. Cut that division off. Good. Cut off all these places and peoples. Nice. Now the motorized have pretty much free reign to go up here if we really wanted to. So it's not too bad, not too bad. 22 divisions still, so be it. Good, overrand. Nah, maybe we shouldn't go up that way. It's a little crazy to go up that way. Let's, let's kind of hang back because we've got a lot of divisions to kill off. Tons and tons and tons of divisions. Sporty's sports rivalry. While our successful unification of Western Russian efforts at integration has done much to unite the people under a common banner, fierce rivalries between the many regions of our nation still remain. While the era of armed warlordism may have ended, our people are finding new ways to act on these rivalries. One such method seems to be hockey. <coughs> Excuse me. The recent game between the Gorky tankers and the Kazans, aka Bars, have ended in chaos following a near 4 2 win for the Bars in the first game of the season. The people of Gorky refused to take the defeat lying down, kicking off a series of drunken demonstrations. The protests, which le later led to rioting, involved an attempt to prevent the AK Bars from returning to their hotel. The defacing of several locations with, across the city with offensive racial or just slurs against Tartars, and many incidents of looting and vandalism. The damages following the event have totaled to a considerable sum, and many are concerned that it may have set a worrying precedent for the future games, especially as the hockey season begins in earnest. Oh boy. Good, get up there. Help out. If we can circle these guys, that would be amazing. Keep moving in there, guys. The motorized is going to be great. Hang the collaborators. And then Invisible and Legendary. Under the impeccable guidance of the Russian Bonaparte. A red Bonaparte. The West Russian Revolutionary Front has been reborn. The late General Voroshilov would scarcely have been able to imagine the heights to which we have ascended. Every single reactionary and capitalistic force in West Russia has been subdued. And the red flag flies from Arkhangelsk to Koibyshev. We've made history in our subjugation of the region, and soon we'll be able to push into Siberia. The reformation of the Soviet Union is closer than it has been in a decade. It will not fail to live up to the sacrifices of our fallen comrades. It will get more political power, division recovery at 35%, wow, and 20% more stability. Not bad. Oh crap, we got defeated there, huh? That really sucks. We got encircled, and we were defeated. Oh, they might encircle us here. Oh boy. No, 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 no. Oh, if the Finns do that, I'm, they're going to pay dearly for this then. They will pay more than in blood. They're going to pay with generations blood. If you lose another division, it's going to be your head, boy. It's going to be your head. Yep, they lost it. Okay, I'm not, we're not going to give up until the very end here. They're all going to die. We've lost 30,000 to 85. That's not enough death. We need more. I'm, we're forcing the attack. They want to act like the way they are. Oh, they encircled it. Oh, come on. Seriously. The AI is... You just let them do stuff. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. Hold the front. You pieces of Finnish garbage. Holy cow. Kill every single one of them. I don't care what happens. Drain every single one of their man all their manpower reserves. It doesn't matter at this point. Kill them off. Kill them off with extreme hatred at this point. You kill off two of my divisions? Yeah, they're out of manpower already. Yeah, they're done. They're completely done. No, no, you keep these people here. I hate this little stupid little like thing here. You, know, you do that, you do that, you do that. You just hold, do whatever you need to do. Kill every single one of these fins off. An entire generation is going to be wiped out for what we're going to about to do here. Oh, cut them off. Yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, come on. Nope. You're going in right there. I don't care how many losses we take. I mean, we have more than enough manpower. They do not, though. Can you just make sure we don't get encircled? 
better agricultural methods, though. Without food, men may not work, and without work, government typically ceases to exist. The bureaucracy is sustained and evaporating in a matter of weeks. However, the inverse is also true. With more food comes more planning, the formation of ever more complex states. After all, we're not the first states formed in the creation of agriculture. New agricultural innovations will reduce the amount of hard labor needed on the fields and shift the workload to mechanized equipment like tractors and automated harvesters. Advances in fertilizers she allows cro crops to grow quicker and cheaper. Men will food, and it will be plenty. Come on. Come on. Hold for now. You actually attack this way. Good. And now hold. Every single one of these fence is going to die. I don't care what the cost. We lost so many men. But so be it. I don't care. I, I really don't care at this point. I really don't care what the fins want. Break them. Break their spirits. Kill every single one of the last one off. They didn't give us any mercy. We're not going to give them any mercy either. Uh, oh, negative. Thank you. And then that's all we can do really for now. Even though I'd love more stability. No, you're not done yet. No, you got to kill these two piece of crap divisions off. Good. Oh, man, you really want to kill these guys off, don't you? So do I, but time to burn Helsinki, right? You're going to be cut off, whatever. Uh, we're not that far into them. They've lost so many guys. We've lost a lot of guys, too. I've sacrificed that soldier, so be it. Get in there, get in there. At least we still have a motorized, which is nice. You know, they're crazy for attacking, that's fine, whatever. Ooh, actually, we need some more plane here, too. Good, bomb the living hell out of them. And, can we duplicate this? Even more chaos, yes, 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 yes. No, no surrender, I'm not even gonna read that. I'm, I'm not gonna mess around with these god dang piece of garbage fins. Everyone's going to force the attack. I don't care what it costs. I don't care about the cost of this. Battle for Italy. Good. The Finns are going to play in heavy blood. And poverty relief. Good. Helsinki's going to burn. Burn, burn, burn. He's going to trick you. Tempera. Civilian construction. Offers unconditional surrender? I don't want that. I really don't want that. They killed off a few divisions. No. Just no. <laughs> Diplomats are representing the Finnish government have approached us offering surrender once again. This time they have fully conceded to our demands and offering to hand over Murmansk, Onega, and all Karelia east of Vipuri. Those will restore the board's position in 1936 and bring millions of Russians back into the fold. With the rightful territory returned to us and all questions of military supremacy def definitely settled by a route of Finnish armed forces, we have nothing else to gain from the war. It has been triumphant to return of the Russian nation to the world stage with a reclamation of a valuable region and a decisive victory over the foreign rival to make it all the better. Let us make peace with the Finns and turn our attention to the east. Karelia was just the beginning. Soon all of Russia will be reunited under our flag. No, I want... I don't know why, like... Why can't we just keep going? I want... Rush... The, fin the Finns to be completely red at this point. How many divisions they killed off? No. I'm still going to keep killing them. I don't care what the peace treaty says. <laughs> and... Oh, we need that one too. So, we have to be at peace. But I don't care. Keep killing the Finns. Piece of garbage Finns. They're going to... Man, I can't wait till TNO 2 now. I want to be able to kill them off. Completely. And wholly kill them off. Yeah. We lost... What, 70, I'm going to assume 70,000 people in the war. You know, it's not great. But, as you can see from our manpower, completely replaceable. Completely replaceable. The Finns, though, they have up to 12 divisions. They lost every, pretty much everyone. Like, mm -mm, mm -mm. you're not going to mess with the WRRF like that. No, 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 no. Actually, you know, I'm going to have, have these guys train. Let's come over here and train. Something different, you know? It's a little different from what I normally do. Cool. Even with a budget boost, we still can't make anything, which is really just so sad. Uh, let's see what can we do here. Mm, prepare for war. Well, we kind of already are. Higher foreign instructors, more army professionalism. Yes, please. And then we'll choose... Well, agriculture mechanization would be nice. Heavy machinery would be actually a little better, though. Let me some agricultural stuff. Invincible and legendary. Contemporary decades have, in the past, held nothing but despair. The Russian people, for so long under siege, were cast adrift. Like a dry dreidel poised on a table's edge, they toyed with a total oblivion. However, through it all, a scant hope has lingered, casting its rare light through the thick, dark clouds. Being an extra ration, a scavenged vehicle, or an unusually quiet sky, the people have found solace in little victories for far too long. Today, however, for the first time since the 50s, the clouds have sparted. Sunlight pours through, and the people bask in his glow. The Grand Marshal, long chafing under superiors, incompetents, and opportunists, finds himself validated. 
through our dedication to the cause and innovative theoretical doctrines, we have reigned supreme. Today, we take the first steps towards healing. West Russia is one in invincible and ready to advance boldly. The, winds is, the wind is strong against the Grand Marshal's back and is under his leadership. Stewardship. We shall not falter. Krasnaya Armia Vise Silni. Cool. Industry for the defense of socialism, a red state for red army. The red army is and will likely always be the last and greatest defender of socialism in Russia. It will be the primary organ through which our socialist ways are to be preserved. In accordance with this line of thought, we must make the red army into the most formidable force on the planet. We will begin reorganization of the red army immediately, with reviews for officers and commanders alike, as well as a full inventory of all firepower as the red army has to offer. With this information at hand, we will create a list of all areas in which the red army is found to be lacking and begin to approve upon it. Meaning the Stavka. Pretty good. We do have some libertarian socialists, some despots, some fascists, and some ultra nationalists, huh? Interesting. Interesting. Continue training, for we lost way too many men, and many many of our guys were too ill prepared to fight that war. <sighs> oh, the Finns. God. Mmm. Sakarna wins in a decent civil war, so be it. Throw in the artillery, even though we don't have any artillery to speak of. We need it, anyways. And our guns are looking a little better now, which is good. Now we can slash the military stuff, which is fine. Uh, it's not too bad, actually, for a budget and such. Ooh, actually, if we can increase, increase construction spending, that's the way to do it. I'm thinking long-term, short-term pain, long-term gain. Yes, please. After our current focus, let's see, look to the past academic base would be good. I'd like the stability, though. The room where the Grand Marshal was in... Uh, was in in was austere. Outside of a long table adorned with maps and papers of all kinds, there was little comforts besides the wooden chairs. And silence reigned in the brightly lit room for a moment as he stood. Then they flocked to him, marching as in, in as one. Generals, officers, all members of the general staff saluting and taking seats before picking up dossiers with different titles. War plans, one read. Economic renewal. Securing control. Ideological doctrine. All read was, was inside the folders. That was a very awkward sentence. Occasionally, a show of praise exited one's member's mouth or a brief question corrected within seconds. The staff got warriors, man. They would lead by example. What do you think? Tukhachevsky asked, though, while his ears heard the ascent, his eyes were looking out the single window. With well, the first of many productive meetings over the Stavka filed out, or filled out, leaving the Grand Marshal looking out to the horizon. Russia calls. Politicized military. We have reformed the Presidium. Uh, let's see. We can't do that one. We can't do that one. We can't do that one. Okay, cool. Is that all we can do? Yes, it is. All right. Lessons from Trotsky's? I like a better academic base, but I want some more administrative strain reduction and poverty rate to increase as well, so. The decades old dream has been made real. A new union in the West, birthed from blood, brains, and bullets. The sacrifices of thousands of Red Army soldiers and the comrades are forged now into a new stability from Arkhangelsk to Ufa. Unlike others across the Russian race, our revolutionary front aspires to more than simply self preservation. With the photo established, the time has come for a return to normalcy. The Presidium, long beloved and loathed institution, must find life anew. However, in accordance with the Grand Marshal's theories, we will find a balance between civilian, military, and administration. The Red Army, as a harbinger of revolution, will never again be simply beholden to the will of bureaucrats and schemers. Neither will the Presidium be entirely useless, lest our legitimacy be dissolved. A new struggle for the soul and structure of the new government has begun. Let us take the task in earnest with our, and remain watchful of the fa failings of our past. Which is good, because I want to build, 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 build. Let's see. I kind of want to get more stability. Weekly stability actually be pretty nice right now. So let's go and do that one first, and then we'll grab another one here as well. Agricultural base and slightly decreased quarrying times. That seems really beneficial. Really, really good. Agricultural mechanizations. Yeah. Escalate land reforms. That would be really good for the future. Oh, even more. You get infrastructure and industrial equipment. I like that. I'm going to do this one, though. I like to slightly decrease coring times because that'll be helpful in the future. So that'll be very, very good. And we're barely building up. It is already 1966. That time went by quite quickly as we were in the warlord stage, but we're looking pretty good here right now. And this is already cored, so we don't have to worry about that, which is awesome. 5.7% growth. Well, it could be worse. could be better. And after reforming the Presidium, old man Lobanov, I would like to do that, but poverty is more important to me. Zukov, in his years, pathetically jockeying for the favor of the Voroshilov, called the Grand Marshal Tukhachevsky the would-be usurper in an attempt to paint him as some aspiring tyrant. But the truth was never so pretty or petty, nor was it so simple. The Grand Marshal has made no secret of his disdain for the traitors and bureaucrats that led the Union to ruin, but this does not mean he aspires to become a simple military despot. The Grand Marshal seeks to overcome the failures of the past, ensuring that the men who direct the revolution understand its importance. Frankly, there's some who fit such a criteria. These loyal civilian administrators 
who have come around to the new spirit of our struggle will be granted seats in the new presidium. Thus, civilian rule returns to West Russia, alleviating or leaving the army of sufficiently or suffocatingly complex political duties. However, the Red Army must remain wary and watchful of the new presidium. While its goals align for now with the, those of the people, the past has shown the potential for careerism and treachery such an institution can create. Brigadiers to the Republic of Ireland. I've seen a place Ireland someday. Is there anything else here? We could buy more guns. I'm not going to buy places from these. Oh, are they capitalists? I think they're, I think they're capitalists. So, yeah, no thanks. Anything else from there? No. Yes. Very much yes. How are we looking? We need a lot more artillery. And, uh, I do take this and doing too bad for us. And look to the past. In order to properly rebuild the socialist revolution, we must learn from the failures of those who came before us. Those goals were noble. The Soviets were corrupted by institutions such as the NKVD, and by disastrous economic plans which failed to industrialize Russia. But chiefly, Bukharin's failure to develop an economy which could mobilize itself in time for war and his outright refusal to invest in military spending were the Germans' threat was ever approaching. Our most prominent communist intellectuals within the newly united states are advising that we look towards other old revolutionary theorists. Rebuilding the West, despite the lack of civilians in any position of power within the new statistocracy, the Grand Marshal was aware of the current role that the people play, and more importantly, of the hardships they have suffered before and during now. Thus, during one of, the, one of the first things on his agenda is set a massive sweeping construction and food allocation programs. From rubble, factories are built. From ashes, food lines are formed, with the army making sure that the rations are equal. No one has too much or too little in the Grand Marshal's eyes. Any complaints are silenced, and any unruliness is dealt with, and quotas are set. No need to ask what happens to those who fail the quotas, but the harshness of rebuilding is for good cause. Mostly aware of what Russia means for the families, friends, and themselves. So a tax construction worker ignores the lack of breaks. A mother waits her turn in food line with an empty stomach, and a soldier keeps everything orderly, even as his thoughts linger less on the people he's supervising and lean more towards hoping the food lines provide. provide. In the end, it'll all be worth it. A solemn bow. But next up, we're going to go ahead and choose something else. We're returning to the gives more stability, which is not bad. We don't need more manpower, though. 3% more stability is not bad. Agriculture does improve. Academic base, research facilities, worker training. I like the bonus of industry. Actually, you know what? I almost never choose this. I would like to do the expertise because I we got to keep moving through our industry a little bit faster. So, solemn bow. Ustinov squinted against the harsh sunlight reflecting off the fresh snow, his eyes narrowed into slits. Samara had once again been brought into compliance with the West Russian Revolutionary Front. An economic minister felt a strange creeping sense of nostalgia and childhood horror slip into his gut. Samara, the city of his hatred and youth, the city of crushing poverty that ground every penny and ounce of joy that the young Ustinov and his mother had. He remembered catching rats in the dark, blinding them with a flashlight and slamming their heads against the brick walls of the hovel. Meat was scarce in those days and bones peeked out from thin shawls of skin. Ustinov knew that he had been lucky to have rats to eat and he and his mother had heard of what other villages have been forced to do to acquire precious protein. Ustinov remembered that hand feeding his sick and dying mother crusts of bread and a thin rat soup, comforting the woman who had been his only true friend in his young life. The economic minister blinked sudden tears from his eyes and swallowed his pain. Samara would be rebuilt. Russia would be rebuilt. The times of starvation and scarcity would come to an end. Never again. This we swear. Construction would be nice. Workers, oh, popularity of the government will increase. Industrial expertise will go up slowly. 0.35 political power. Now, we can do some math here, everyone. And if you're still watching, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. I I I don't know why, but I've been struggling with my pronunciations in this episode, so... So, basically, we lose 14 political power if we choose this one decision. But we get more popularity, and then industrial expertise? You know what? Let's try it. That's something unique. Something a little different. I like that. 15, 14 days. And then, those who fight no longer politicize the military... Oh, yes. Let's do that. That makes more sense. Let's reduce our administrative strain. It is no question that the Red Army is a very important component to advancing the proletarian revolution. Where would the humble laborers be without the army to protect them from the reaction in bourgeois forces? The Red Army must dedicate itself to preserving the revolution by offering social education to its soldiers and informing the West Russian civilians that the Red Army will protect them. Finally, the Red Army may act as a force of political change in Russia, securing the revolution against the reactionaries within Russia and the Germans across the border. Which would be a very, very good thing. Next up, we shall have this done very soon. Awesome. And we're actually slowly making more factories, which is nice. It's just taking... It's just going to take a wh quite a while. Good. Now we're going to go ahead and grab... I love, like more resources. I actually like more land option too, but military construction because we can. Good, good, good. Resource-wise, we still need more equipment-wise, not resource-wise. Tanks are not looking too bad, actually. APCs are looking pretty good too. Artillery would be nice. I would love to get more artillery. And some more casts, of course. But that'll come in time. Lewis says the military. Uh, loyalty to the, to the revolution. More cost. Oh, I don't like that. More daily political power. Authoritarian socialism. Industry for the defense. Can we do anything else? No, we cannot. Those who fight no longer. How about that? 
Of all the tired Soviet institutions, it is the Red Army alone who has stood against the harsh sands of time, while millions evacuated from the, the, across the Ural Mountains. It stood firm in the face of the impending apocalypse. For decades, it has waged a ceaseless war against the dying of the light. And the Red Army itself is to be an appendage to the international proletariat. It's only logical that it be involved in the organization and direction of the struggle. Civilian and military distinctions are of little meaning to the people under siege. Never again will we permit the development of a distinct bureaucratic class. A cabal of sniffing rats who claim the victories of the proletariat as their own while undermining them at every turn with incompetence and political ambition. The masses themselves will exercise power through one institution alone, a synthesis of the army and presidium, staff of the front's veterans marshals. Finally, we will have a government of those who have mingled with and fought only for the people. Now, it's going to cost more, which I don't like, but whatever. Improved academic base. The foundations of society is writing. It cannot be overstated how the institutions that define civil life rest on the bedrock of the written words. Society marches forward hand in hand with the literature of the time. It lives and dies by the high tides of writing. She sleeps when the pages are burned and awakens when a curious young person decides to scratch something on that palm leaf. It is a progenitor of liberty and may spell the end of it. Our schooling and our literacy matter more than nearly anything else. When it dies, progress isn't just halted, it actively begins to wither. Progress towards whatever ideal, be it racial purity, free market, or equality, cannot survive without a pen. So yes, our universities have expanded. But some man today is newly learning how to read and opening up Pandora's box that is writing. Something that is to be celebrated. More output? Yes, please. And we're going to grab... Agriculture mechanization? Research facilities? Equipments. Now, this is going to hurt civilian factories, but we get three more infrastructure, which is actually not bad. I kind of like that. That's going to take forever to build, but whatever. Those who fight no longer. And we shall end with maybe one more focus, shall we? The front triumphant. That's actually great. How much political power do we get? 1.14? That's not bad. 1.41. Not bad at all. Still training some more soldiers, which is good. I will put the motorized somewhere else eventually. Oh, and Sverdlovsk has united, united the western side of Siberia. Not bad. Now, we got to figure out where they do checks and balances. Or an equal partner. Let me know in the comments below. Should we do equal partner or checks and balances? Let me know in the comments below. But regardless, we're going to go ahead and do ooh, lessons from Trotsky. Why not? One figure that has been somewhat valorized by a few intellectuals recently is Leon Trotsky. Sadly, Comrade Trotsky has his life cut short by a mental Ill, mentally ill assassin, so his ideas would never come to fruition in the old Soviet Republic. Tukhachevsky maintains the belief that the dictatorship of the proletariat must be enforced by a strong revolutionary army, a belief he held in common with Trotsky. Perhaps we should advance some of Trotsky's theories on the dynamics of state, as his critique of Bukharin resonates with many of the intellectuals aligned with the Red Army. Old Man Lubinov Andrei Lubinov was, on, was a young, once a young Russian patriot Devoted to the ideals of Marxism-Leninism, when the Great Patriotic War broke out, Andre was among the first in line to volunteer to join the Red Army. Even after he was hospitalized for an explosion, he insisted that he could continue to fight. When the war was over, he joined Volosilov's West Russian Revolutionary Front with his belief in communism and driving him forward. He preached to his fellow soldiers with a copy of the Communist Manifesto in hand, and he'd say that the, they only needed the words inside the book for guidance. With yet another defeat at the hands of the Germans, however, his faith in communism began to waver. Andre realized he had no home to return to, and there was, there was a chance he would never see it again. He had spent 20 years in the Red Army and nothing to show for it. Old man Lobanov walked through the streets of Akangalsk with nothing but a cane and, wet and backpack. In reality, he was in his 50s, but he didn't look like it with the way he walked. As he walked, he considered that perhaps things would have turned differently if he had retired earlier instead. He might have been able to raise a good family and had a stable life far away from the cold and icy streets of Arkhangelsk. Lobanov placed his cane beside him and stopped to rest on a concrete staircase. Snowflakes began to drip down from the skies as he closed his eyes. When Lobanov opened his eyes... The first thing he saw was a Red Army Commissar with an envelope in his hand. The Commissar simply said, this is for you, before handing him the letter. The Commissar then walked down the sidewalk with ten other envelopes just like him. Lubinov opened the envelope and said it was the first pension he'd ever received. Well, not much. This was the first time in ten years that Lubinov felt hope. Hope that he could forge a new life beyond our uncles. He picked up his cane and walked down the sidewalk with a new determination. A new beginning for an old soldier, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I once again apologize for my, for my mispronunciation of words and such like that. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider, like usual, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we'll have more army professionalism, and we shall continue making and modernizing West Russia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.